this is the greatest force ever applied to move a vehicle. This is the cluster of rocket engines boosting the Saturn vehicle free of gravity, straight up. Saturn is the largest rocket ever produced by the United States. Not a military rocket. Saturn was designed solely as a space vehicle. It can carry multi-ton payloads into Earth orbit or to the moon. And the scientific space exploration by Saturn rockets will lead eventually to placing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. But all the missions planned for Saturn hinge on one essential element of space rocketry. If we fill a sphere with highly pressurized gases, there can be no action and reaction. The pressures are equal in all directions and the gas remains motionless. But if a hole is cut in the sphere, the pressurized gas rushes to escape. Thus we have an imbalance of pressure in the sphere in these two directions. Similarly, if we fill a balloon with compressed air, there is a greater pressure within the balloon than outside. When we release the air within the balloon, the column of air escaping sets up a momentum going in one direction, and the reaction in the other direction acting as pressure on the interior of the balloon propels our little rocket. If we look at a representation of a rocket engine's thrust chamber, we see the same principle applied. Through combustion in the thrust chamber, great amounts of energy are released. Hot expanding gas escapes through the nozzle throat. Because of the design of the nozzle, the mass of escaping gas molecules is accelerated rapidly. This kinetic energy, bursting from the nozzle exit at supersonic speed, generates an enormous force. From the mass and acceleration of the gas flow is computed a basic measurement of rocket power, thrust. The reaction to this thrust is expressed in pressure against the top of the chamber here against the sides here and against the interior walls of the nozzle here. Forcing the thrust chamber and with it the entire body of the rocket upward. Oh, and one other thing. Many people in the past thought that the rocket required a solid body of atmosphere to push against in order to move. Incorrect.
my little balloon lip okay so essentially pro moon landers and people were uh, people at nasa as well they all tend to think that the action of the air rushing out at high at high high speed okay in this direction will give you an equal and opposite reaction in this direction which acts upon the inner wall of the balloon and thus propels it forward obviously you know when we let go of the balloon it just pops out and flies everywhere but that th that's their explanation as to how it works okay now if we take a look at a rocket engine okay a rocket what we'd see is that here's my little rocket okie dokie dum 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 there's my uh, there's my nozzle pretty good eh now we've got the uh, fuel and oxidizer tanks we've got pipes which lead down to pumps and turbines and things which basically <clears throat> pump the fuel and the oxidizer into the combustion chamber where, where the uh, uh, they use hypergolic uh, fuels so they ignite upon uh, contact with oxygen and uh, they cause a rapid expansion of gases and then they expand out at very very high speed to create thrust or a thrust force which then gets chopped out on the back of the nozzle Okay, now, uh, pro moon landers and lots of people at NASA tend to think or tend to promote the idea that merely the action of the exhaust coming out from from the combustion here to here will create an opposite and equal reaction that forces or that causes the rocket to move to be propelled forward. Okay, so basically all of these all of these the fuel and the the liquid the molecules moving in one direction here cause an equal and opposite reaction actually on the on the base of the rocket which pushes it forward now that's their idea on how a rocket works uh, one thing one very important thing to mention and that is as soon as um, as soon as all these gases um, all these gases here leave the nozzle they are no longer effective in the forward propulsion of the rocket. That's what pro moon landers uh, and people at NASA say. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind. Okay, now here's my explanation as to how a rocket works. Okay, so here we go again. There we go. We've got our little big, big, big wide nozzle there. There we go, we've got our fuel tanks, NOx die tanks, we've got the pipe work, goes down to turbines. Now, so the fuel and the oxidizer get pumped in into the thrust chamber or into the combustion chamber at very high speed. You get to a burn or combustion of the gases. They expand and they are forced out through the nozzle at extremely high speeds. Obviously, when we, when we watch a rocket lift off and launch, uh, we we see this you know it's clearly observable now what I think happens is that the action of this thrust force here causes a reaction by the mass that is behind the rocket so if I just turn this around for everyone to see so the rocket the thrust force coming out the nozzle hits the mass and the mass gives an opposite and equal reaction that acts on the contact area here that pushes the rocket in this direction. One very important thing that a lot of people tend to overlook and that is a rocket is one mass system so all of this all of that there is can should be regarded as one mass system You've got fuel, you've got thrust, and you've got the actual mass of the rocket itself. All that is one mass system. And that solely acts on the mass, whether it be the Earth, whether it be atmosphere, that gives you an equal and opposite reaction. So that's my understanding of how a rocket works. Okay, now we're going to put this to the test. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to use our little balloon car as our little experiment to see who's right and who is wrong. There we go and see how well it performs, see what it does. There we go. So we've blown up our balloon and there we go. There we go. And as you can see, there we go. It's going pretty well. What I'm saying basically is that the air just coming out of the uh, straw acts on the atmosphere that's in the room, which causes a reaction, which then pushes the whole lot forward. Because you've got to remember, and that is that the air coming out of the straw actually moves with the vehicle. It doesn't get left behind or anything. It actually moves with it. That's why we have to remember that it's a mass system. Okay, so how we're going to check to see whether who's right or who's wrong is what we're going to do. We're going to divert the air that comes out of the straw. On landing, and however, straw. deceleration is wanted and then thrust reversers are used. These are flaps that move to divert the gas forwards rather than backwards through the exhaust. This has the effect of slowing the aircraft down. We can do this simply by using a piece of paper. We're going to attach. There we go. Now I'm going to put the paper. I hope everyone can see this. There's at least a two inch gap there. I'm not sure whether everyone can see that. There we go. There's a, there's a gap where the straw, from the distance from the end of the straw to the uh, to the paper basically you're not restricting the air movement that's coming out of the uh, the the bottle and the straw so because the air can dissipate everywhere out the sides and everything okay now if pro moon landers are correct in that the air moving this direction will cause an equal and opposite direction a force in that direction then it should move Whereas if I'm correct and that it, that it needs the mass of the atmosphere to act against, this shouldn't move, basically, okay? Because we've actually diverted the, the thrust force of the balloon car, okay? So we're going to now put it to the test. So here we go. Let's just line it up. Here we go. And we're off. And we're off. And we're off. Uh, it's not moving. Um, what we're going to do... Um, um, it's not working at all and it's not moving um, the balloons going down the air is coming out of the straw it's hitting the straw I can feel the air from the sides and it hasn't moved one little bit there we go if we go back to uh, how a rocket works in space we have to remember that in space there is a vacuum where where basically matter is very 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 um, sparse sparsely populated in a you know in a given area okay so, okay so you've got fuel tanks and my pen's running out there we go so what's going to happen is that we're going to have the fuel or what could happen i should say is uh let me just change my pen there we go we've got a nice purpley one here there we go there we go that's that's better what's going to happen in in a, in a vacuum when the rocket's in space and that is the fuel is going to be pumped out okay you're going to have combustion you're going to have the thrust force coming out okay out of there 
but there is no mass there for it to for it to act upon therefore you won't get the uh, you won't get the reaction in this direction you will not get that because there is no um, mass for this thrust force to act upon now that's we've we've clearly demonstrated that with the balloon car uh, in the video but also one of the major factors of why rocket uh, will not work in space is that we also have the idea of free expansion so basically with free expansion what we what we can see with free expansion and that is when we have our when we have our rocket here there we go and we have our pipe work going into the combustion gym as soon as the valves are open to allow the fuel and the oxidizer into the combustion chamber they'll just be sucked straight out by the vacuum of space like this and the rocket will just remain stationary it won't go anywhere now I'm not sure about you but after watching this video I mean how you know there's a lot of bullshit in life at the end of the day and I'm to me rockets working in space is just part of it